The tournament finally starts, and because of that, we'll give you a tournament-themed show. What are the biggest needs in the draft for the Charlotte Hornets? How might they manage their assets? Who are players to watch in the upcoming tournament? We'll get to all of that with David Walker today on Locked On Hornets. You are Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. In a minute, cuz we live. We live. We It's Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free. We're available anywhere you get your podcast. And that includes YouTube. Real quickly, want to shout out FanDuel. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200. Bucks. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. There's David Walker. He's going to be my co-host today. No Doug Branson. He's going to be helping us out behind the scenes. David is going to be at the forefront in his Kobe Bryant costume today. You can follow him. Oh boy, Twitter. that's right. I'm glad you picked Walker. that up. It's yeah, the Kobe com- combo. It is it Kobe is. combo. What's the reason for the Kobe combo? Just because it's just because you felt like it, or is there a reason? Yeah, this one was the closest one on the floor. Uh, so <laughs> when I walked in here, to that one on. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you caught that. And I'm also glad Walker, you do a great job of uh, of telling the folks that may not be in front of their YouTubes what uh what the folks are wearing so i got the the visual from doug yesterday uh yeah. so i appreciate that as a, as a listener a downloader and watcher you know it's always like, nice to know what the, whatever well i appreciate it i don't know like yeah maybe mm-hmm. it, it sounds like maybe i do it too much but when you bring the kobe no. combo to the forefront i'm gonna have to mention that there was one outfit doug had i think it was monday where i mean it was bright neon yellow it was as soon as i get done reading <laughs> so as you can see it on youtube you can see my eyes my focus shift read intro boom bright shiny shiny doug branson in my face and so that's why i brought that one out and yeah uh doug had a grandma yeah. hoodie on i believe yesterday if i'm not mistaken so there's the outfit in case Fire. i missed it it's always coming with them you know you know i got it i'm yeah. walker mail you can listen to me <laughs> wfnc every weekday from 12 to 3 p.m is today your favorite sports day on the calendar david the thursday of the ncaa tournament is there something better than that because i can't tell you that there is for me this is my favorite day not even on the sports calendar just regular old calendar this is it right yeah 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 no it it still like feels like christmas morning uh, i think especially maybe as you get older maybe there's a sweet spot in there you know in college right out of college when maybe you don't have quite as many responsibilities uh that some of the grown-ups do but man you you can still feel feel it in the air especially like obviously we're in charlotte so we got the regional starting today downtown mm-hmm. i'm gonna pop over there are you okay. gonna be there are you guys yeah, gonna be, I'm in gonna the be house? there yeah after the All show right. done at uh three so i'm gonna be catching basically like the last two thirds if you will of the north carolina game but yeah i'll be over there nice nice yeah man it, it's awesome dude it's still fun wall-to-wall basketball dude yeah, it's, well, especially with some local teams, too, like also having Tennessee. No, Virginia. D- definitely no Virginia, which I don't think Thank anybody's God. complaining about. Yeah, so God. you get to see North Carolina at the Spectrum Center, and then I believe the Hornets will come back after a few more road games. They're, they're in action to, tonight, uh, I believe, or maybe it's tomorrow. And then um, okay. and then they're still on the road for a little <laughs> bit before they hit uh, the Spectrum Center once more for eight straight days. So let's get to the NCAA tournament Boom. theme here, David, because there's a lot of needs for this team still. I think if Mitch Kupchak was still in charge of this team, then they would tell you, we can't draft for need. We still have to draft for talent, right? I think that's still the mantra, even if you are going to have your options and free agency, you're going to have a little more money to work with. But if we're looking at some of the players to watch in the second segment, let's start broader here first. What do you think are just some flat out needs for this team still um, as you anticipate this team making those decisions going into next year with maybe some of the guys on the roster right now who could uh, who could, you know, be a fixture of, of the future? Yeah, I mean, for me, I think it's still uh, down on the low post, right? It's getting some depth there at center, uh, getting some more beef uh, underneath the basket in the paint to help kind of defend the rim. If those guys can step out and shoot threes, great. Uh, But they need quality level rotation guys uh, to keep throwing in there. I I think they're just getting – they're still getting muscled out of the way a lot, the Hornets are. And and so I think they need some guys there. 
it, it feels like to me, especially with the Michich edition, you know, you're feeling a little bit better about your backcourt. Obviously, the key to all that uh, is Lamelo Ball. Uh, but assuming he comes back and is healthy, you feel like you've got a little bit more depth in that certain area. So I'm not looking as much there with some of these guys we're going to be looking at. Um, so I think it's for me, it's it's definitely in the post. And, and 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 some more defenders out on the wing, I think, is, is what you got to look at. And, of course, you want all these guys to be able to hit shots and continue to move the ball. And some of the guys we'll talk about, you know, fill some of those, uh, check some of those boxes. Uh, I feel like everyone in this draft, there's always weaknesses. But, like, obviously this year everybody's talking about how it's a little bit of a down draft. Uh, but there's always going to be somebody, man. Every time they say, you know, this is a bad draft class. I mean, the LaMelo draft class was, was, was kind of dumped yeah. on. Uh, when it happened at the time. And now you, you, you may have the face of the league coming out of that draft. You know what I mean? Um, so so I think there's still reason to be excited. And like from where the Hornets are picking, they're going to have an option to, to get an impact player. They, they just are. The, from the, you know, the way sh- things shake out in the lottery, unless they get you know completely uh, bamboozled by the ping pong balls, they're, they're going to be in a, a good space to get somebody. Yeah, and I'm I'm glad you said that. By the way, I was way wrong. The Hornets play Saturday. Don't know why I thought they played tonight, but cool. it's, it's a long wait, long wait. Tuesday and then Saturday, so a big time rest time. Oh man! So yeah. yeah, I'm glad you said like the draft where everybody says the draft is so weak, and then sometimes it ends up turning out pretty strong. So you're right. You go back to that draft with Lamelo. Some good players in that draft, and it was pretty strong for the most part. James Wiseman was certainly a bad pick at number two that could have been the mm-hmm. Charlotte Hornets selection had they got ahead of Golden State in the lottery. But LaMelo, good pick. Anthony Edwards. I'm thinking about other guys. Like, I know I was a Vassell. Yeah, there you go. There's somebody. that I, I was a Vassell fan. Um, who else was <laughs> Like, Anyeka Kungwu is like a decent player for the Hawks. I go back to also like that 2011 NBA draft where it was considered Kyrie Irving and then nobody else. And Mm -hmm. you did have, once you get a little bit further down the list, you had at least a couple of other guys worth mentioning. Clay Thompson at number 11. There was, of course, Kimball Walker at number nine, who ended up being, I don't know, the best Hornets player of all time. So even, even if you have this entire discussion leading up to the NBA draft, you never know. And so, yeah, it does matter when you have these couple of picks that you're moving up, not at the expense of winning culture, right? Like, I'm still trying to win games. I'm not trying to tank. But it does matter when you have this high of a pick. It's not just useless for the Hornets to have this high of a first-round pick. That's expected, I think, about like sixth now if they drafted based on their odds. They're going to keep this selection. You talked about this pre-recording. They tech- they owe a first-round pick this year to San Antonio, but it's lottery-protected. So, Hornets... A okay there. You're going to be in the lottery. Yeah, They're going to be selecting one. one of these guys. Yeah, I think one of my needs for the Hornets team, it's I, it used to be just all defense. It used to be I mm-hmm. just wanted players that could defend out there on the perimeter. It's I don't think it matters so much off of coaching. Like Steve Clifford or whoever is the head coach shouldn't dictate who you select. I do think you can get by a little more. If you lean more offense in this draft, if Steve Clifford is coming back, especially with what he's what he's done the last two halves of each of the last two seasons. Right. So this offense is so bad to watch, especially without LaMelo out there on the floor. Brandon Miller takes care of some of your wing needs that you got at second overall last year. So that's a huge help. He's been fantastic this season. I think you're right with getting some physical players that can play down low. But also, I think. Three and D is pretty yep. nice. Uh, we need it, it's one of those things where I fall in a cliche where everybody wants a three and D player in free agency. Everybody wants three and D in the NBA draft. Man, the Hornets don't have a lot of guys that can do both. It's Brandon Miller that's your best option that can do both right now. So can you get someone that isn't a liability on one end of the floor or the other? Can you get someone with a well-rounded game enough? to where you're okay with them defending and putting up some shots from beyond the arc at a 36% clip or something like that. I think just well-rounded, high IQ, but really is not a liability on any end of the floor. That's what I would like to have in the first round of this draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the good news for the Hornets is there's going to be those guys there, uh, I think. Like, even if they slip a few spots, uh, like if they're picking, I don't know, various places out of them four or six right now, something like that. Uh, because like right now we're just talking about the college guys. We're not even getting into 
the G Leaguers and some of the guys from overseas who, who really may be at the tip top of this draft class. But I think if we're talking about NCAA tournament guys, especially, there's a couple guys that are going to fit that bill in my eyes. Like there's going to there's be some length. There's going to be some ability to move the ball. There's going to be defense probably first and foremost – when you're talking about is he like just a knockdown shooter or is he more of a, a, a you know a do it all type of guy? Uh, there's going to be some opportunities to to get that. So they're really going to have to hunker down um, and figure out which one they like best. I mean, they may end up having their pick of a couple guys depending on where they fall. So I think there's a reason to be excited. There's certainly a reason to watch some of these guys in the tournament um and see kind of how they perform because you know man it, it happens a lot. Like somebody have a great run on the tournament and they'll skyrocket um you know so so we'll see what happens but i would be kind of excited just because the hornets have an opportunity to get a first round pick and regard i mean a, a top level lottery pick yeah. regardless of how bad people say drafts are they would still rather have a higher pick than not you know so like you pick of the litter. Never gonna, yeah yeah yep. no doubt about it uh let's get to some of those players that you want to keep an eye out on uh let's do it in the next segment talking about some of yes. the tournament players that we want to watch coming up next on locked on hornets don't go to sleep on the hornets just yet at number six a guy from kentucky possibly a guy from yukon some of the better offenses in college basketball we'll talk about some of those guys in just a moment on locked on hornets Before we do that, I want to tell you this episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Classic, classic exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone, Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch high-definition touchscreen informant system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect midsize crossover for your next adventure. Plus, you also have the 2024 Nissan Armada. It will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. You can picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to eight people in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. This episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Thanks again to FanDuel. Thanks again to Nissan. More Locked On Hornets ahead. All right, David, let's talk about some of the players that you are going to keep an eye on here in the NCAA tournament. What you got for us, David? Who's your first player up? So I'm going to throw you a curveball and tell you two guys that I don't think fit the Hornets that great. <laughs> okay, I like it. Yes, yeah, immediately cause, cause, getting cause, rid of the bat. Yeah, because <clears throat> these are guys, and not necessarily bad, but I want to get your thoughts on this, and it's the Kentucky guys, right? It's, yeah. it's Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard, because I think especially Reed Shepard, he shot up to the top of some of these uh, prognosticators draft boards um, and with, you know, because he can score. And so can Rob Dillingham. I mean, the fun thing about Rob Dillingham is you can actually see when you watch the game, you can a actually see when he says to himself, it's Rob Dillingham time mm -hmm. and, and he goes for it, which can be fun. Uh, but I feel like we've had that experiment here in Charlotte as well. And it just feels like you know, as as flashy and as good as both these guys are, I'm not sure they need to be adding the six three point guard shooting guard right now to this roster. I I feel like their picks could be better served elsewhere. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it so much of it depends on what you're doing with Brandon Miller because if Brandon Miller, you want him in the backcourt yep. with Lamelo, then you might stay away from a Dillingham or a Reed Shepard. But if you really want him playing the three. And then you just have shooting galore. Like if you get Reed Shepard yeah. or Rob yeah. Dillingham, you're talking about all guys very capable of shooting 40%. And in fact, I would bet at their not even peak, just floor is probably a little too much, but just at their average 
38% three-point shooters all across the board, yeah. one through three. Now you can just let the big guys do whatever, especially so at that point, let's say you get your stretch four, whoever that is, and then let's say you even get a stretch five at some point. Just shooting all across the board and one through three is amazing at it. Reed Shepard, sure. just, just, just to get people up to speed, Reed Shepard is shooting over 50% on three-point attempts this year. Over 50%. Yeah, you're talking into it. Yeah. So, so it's absolutely bananas what he's doing. Rob Dillingham, below that, is like at 45% from three. So both are nuts. Reed Shepard defensively, I have not done any study this year. Not as much. Yeah. I've just been watching college basketball, and that's been it. But from some of the guys that you can trust, Sam Vecini is somebody I always go to. He talks about Reed Shepard's ability to stay in front of the ball really well. He has some off-ball okay. lapses, but defensively, he likes his point of attack defense. He likes his ability to close out on shooters. And then offensively, he can lead the break. He's a good passer. He's smart. He's tough and can shoot. So Reed Shepard, if, if you're worried about this draft class and you and I both say whatever, mm -hmm. right? Like get the whatever, just sometimes it's pretty good. If you're worried about it though, and you want someone that you know is going to have a high floor and you're drafting in that six to seven range, Maybe Reed Shepard makes some sense if he lasts to you, David, to be honest. Yeah. like I don't even know if Reed Shepard's going to be there at that sixth spot. Hornets might have to get some lottery luck. Dillingham, um, you know, Dillingham is, is a little bit more polarizing, I think. Like Shepard is considered the more sure thing. Yep. And with yep. Dillingham, just looking at uh, uh, Vecini's ride up, he's also 6'3", as you mentioned. Size mm -hmm. impacts him as a finisher at times. This, according to Vecini, really causes issues on the other end, too. So it seems like Shepard is the more complete player. All right, they're back in. I'm glad we got there to them go. first Boom. because they're back, back in. The, they're back, back in the mix. Yep, they're back in the mix. Yeah, Dillingham feels like maybe a little bit more of that six man, uh, you know, microwave instant offense guy, and they both may end up being that. But yeah, I think you're right. The fact that they're being mentioned at the top of these draft boards probably says enough about them that if you're looking for need, or if you're looking for, sorry, not for need, if you're just looking for to add the best offensive player you can, maybe mm -hmm. that is a swing you take. Um, now, the, the, but the the area or the player or the the position uh, that I was really focused on, and I'm going to throw three guys at you because I think they fit them. I think they fit this need out on the wing, um, pretty well. One is, is Cody Williams, six eight from Colorado. Uh, they won last night, so they're still playing. So they're they still playing. They won the playing game. So and he's still been struggling lately. I think he's hurt though, and he's been hurt recently. So he like De Silva, I think is his name. He's the guy mm -hmm. that's been yep. the better player for them. But yeah, Cody Williams has been hurt, but his numbers have not been good here recently. Brother of Jalen Williams, who everyone loves, right? Yeah, so, right. so, so that's going to get some run. And I think uh, the question was with him is, you know, can he turn into that you know special offensive player? But at six eight. You know, can be out there on the wing and, and help you defend and help help move the ball as well. Steven Castle at six six from UConn is a guy you mentioned as well. Uh, very interesting guy on a premier, probably the best team in the country all year, uh, top to bottom. And so you'll get to see him make a run probably to the Final Four, see where he can kind of set himself apart in that UConn offense. But I think he's another guy. I think shooting is a question or consistency of shooting is a question. But if you're looking to add another guy who can help move the ball again, who can be out there on the wing, who could give you some help on defense, be the kind of three and D guy, Stephen Castle is going to be an interesting guy. And I think his name's going to be in the mix too. Yeah. Castle is, is someone you're right, is very interesting. So if you look at him as more of a connective dude, because if you look yep. at some of the yep. better players offensively for UConn, they're not ahead of Castle on the draft board, right? I guess he's more yep. the prototypical body. He was a very good defender, but he helps out in a bunch of different ways where Tristan Newton has been an absolute stud this year. Cam Spencer, really good shooter for them. And then you get to the big guys down low. Klingon yep. is someone I'm not sure improved his draft stock a lot this year, maybe a little bit, but is going to go there in the lottery and is still 7-2 mobile, can finish at the rim, can contest as well. So, you know, Klingon is also like watch UConn, I guess, yep. is something you should do. Yep. One, because yeah. they're the best team in the country, but also they might have some guys that the Hornets could be interested in if you want center depth or if you yep. just want somebody that can connect as well and be that wing where Brandon Miller, Castle, maybe they're a little interchangeable. Castle can be that secondary uh, playmaker for you. Like, yeah, I, I, Castle is intriguing.
Right. Can Castle be the guy that Gordon Hayward just couldn't stay on the floor to be, right? Can he can he turn into that? Can he provide can his offense get to the point where you can kind of throw it to him? Maybe that's the question. But it feels like he could be another connector on that team. And like you can't have enough of those guys, Walker, the guys that can mm -hmm. handle the ball, distribute. I mean, that's been a big problem. I mean, Doug's hit on that a lot. The the lack of distribution and the lack yeah. of of ball movers, uh, you know, that's gonna be a big need. But let's stay on UConn because you mentioned Klingon seven two. Old school big guy, dude, and then just a space eater. Uh, looks doesn't look like his feet are in cement blocks, though. To me, I mean, I'm no, looking forward he moves to watching. Well, man, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so I think he's going to be a name that's going to certainly going to be in the mix. I mean, if anybody's looking to add some center depth or or uh, some beef underneath the rim there, which the Hornets certainly are, right? I mean, I think he's going to be a name. My I, the the plot the the spot I'd seen him on was a little further down, mm -hmm. especially once you add in the G League guys and the and the Euro guys. So like. You know, depending on where they land, I don't know how big of a reach that would be, but he's he's got to be somebody who's certainly on their board. Um, last guy for me. I mean, he's going to be in Charlotte very late for for all you guys that are going to the Tennessee game at nine twenty at the Spectrum Center. Mm. Don Connect. He is someone I get asked about the most, David. I think Locked On Hornets gets asked about him the most. WFNZ text line, the world famous Doug text line. Him. Dalton Connect is the guy. And I mean, just a flat out ridiculous score. 25 points per game in SEC play, 48% from the field, 42 from three. Looks like defensively, those are where the issues are. But it doesn't seem like he's a bad athlete either for your normal, just spot up or considered spot up type of guy. He can do more than that. He's more athletic than what I guess your typical spot up guy is. Don't know if that translates defensively now, but it feels like there are enough tools for him to be good enough defensively. It's all about if you trust your team well enough to be able to improve upon that. So we'll see. But offensively, he, yeah. I think he won SEC player of the year, deserved it. Yep. Just just a nuts player, man. He's so much fun. And that's the guy. That's why we get asked about him more than any other player, more than Castle, more than Reed Shepard. He's the guy people want here in a Hornets uniform. If you can fill it up, you're going to be, uh, you know, in demand. Uh, two more guys, just real quick at Baylor for you, Walker. Okay. Uh, the bit, the big guy, Missy, I believe, uh, seems maybe a, a little bit raw, but but uh, and a younger guy, but someone that, that you know could blossom into a, a big guy down low. I haven't watched him play a ton, so I do want to get my eyes on him. And then I don't know, maybe maybe my leader, just because of the intangibles here, Jacoby Walter. Uh, out of Baylor, another yep. wing guy, another kind of three and D guy, but someone that brings the energy. Okay. We're talking about changing the landscape and the culture of this locker room a little bit. And that is one thing that is in this guy's bio. He's going to be fiery on court. He's going to be, you know, uh, leading the break. He's going to be leading the team in energy. And I think if you put a guy like that with a Brandon Miller, maybe you start to shift some of the malaise that just kind of hangs over this team at times and can get them going you know, and go on a couple runs here. So uh, I'll be interested to see what kind of tournament he has. He Again, he's in that co uh, that Cody Williams, that Stephen Castle class, maybe who performs the best out of those three, but I think they're all three kind of going to be there. And his energy is just really interesting to me. I, I want to continue this conversation in the next yeah. segment because I want to talk about some of the stars. So coming up next on the Locked on Hornets podcast. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. As we know, some of the guys that make first team All-American, they don't necessarily translate to the NBA and they're not the best prospects. But is there still a spot for those guys like a Tristan Newton, like an R.J. Davis? Would he be somebody that interests you? We'll get to him in just a moment on the Lockdown Hornets pod. Before we do that, I do want to tell you that this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. We always appreciate their support. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off of our chest, whether it's big or small. Certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who is unbiased on your life. Today, you might want to talk about the anxiety you're feeling with the NCAA tournament, anything like that. Watching Hornets basketball on Saturday, maybe the anticipation is building up that anxiety even more so. Therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have 
bigger problems than our favorite sports team or the NCAA tournament. And it's important to get things off of your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit BetterHelp.com slash NBA to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash NBA. More Locked On Hornets ahead. Okay, let's get to the stars, David, and let's go right where your wheelhouse is. R.J. Davis, first-team All-American, ACC Player of the Year. His jersey's going to be in the Raptors in Chapel Hill. Yeah, it is. And it's going to be well-deserved. It's going to be one of the best seasons ever, especially if he caps this thing off with a championship run. He already has one Final Four appearance. Can he win the title? It'll be a crazy year if that happens. But is he an NBA player? Because... There's a little bit of a conversation that, hey, maybe he could come back. I there's a maybe mm-hmm. there's a possibility that RJ Davis just decides to go back to Chapel Hill. He, you know, hears all of the NBA opinions. They're telling him, Yeah, man, I don't know how much you can improve. Maybe here's a couple of things you can improve on, but we're not going to take you in the top 40. We're not going to take you in the top 50. I think he's an NBA player, David. And I actually think he compares decently well to a former Hornet in Devontae Graham. So if you're Devontae Graham and you're, I think, like the 34th selection, something like that, Mitch Kupchak trades up early in the second round to go get him. He's the gunner. He's smart with the basketball in his hands. Maybe Graham was more of a playmaker at the time, his last year here. One of the reasons he was viewed as a MIP candidate was he took care of the basketball at a really high level, just never turned it over. I just think Davis, as a movement shooter, and that's real. Like, that's a legit skill of his. He's tiny. Defensively, he's going to get taken advantage yeah. of. It, when it, there was a slump for him, where from two point range he was shooting like thirty two percent, it was really bad for a while. And that's exactly like Devonte Graham. But with RJ, the three point shot never went away. Like when he hit that lull, RJ was still making it rain from distance. I, I think Devonte is the comp. I think there's a place for him in the NBA. He's not going to be a star, but I would not mind a team taking a flyer on him in the second round and seeing if if he can be helpful for you at some point not at all uh yeah you mentioned the size and obviously the age is going to be a knock on him as well i think the age thing may come up with connect as well but he's got the height and the scoring is just so on point that it's not going to hurt him probably as much but rj yeah you can see it a lot of times with carolina this year and God, we might see it some in the NCAA tournament here. If if the other team has a a, a guard uh, physically, you know, superior to Carolina's backcourt, they're trying to take them in the post. They're trying to punish them on defense as much as they can, just because RJ, a little bit slighter frame. I mean, you know, it's not like not strong, but like he's just a smaller guard, right? And so that's where a lot of his negatives are coming in. But he is the type of guy that, and you look at it, he dropped forty two, I believe, this year. Uh, you know, ACC player of the year, led the league in scoring, all that stuff, and has been the man on Carolina's team uh, 100% all year long, even with a, a very experienced guy in Baycott being there. Uh, he's been given the keys to this offense, and once he shifted off ball, really been able to flourish. And the shot making, dude, I mean, that's what it comes yeah. down to. His ability to hit these shots from anywhere. I mean, the step back, I think, is NBA level at this point. Um, he may have to de- level, develop, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, on the creative side, the the ability to distribute. But then again, you know, he did that for what two and a half years at Carolina. You know, he was running the point some too, so he's got that in his bag. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you. I, I certainly think he's worth a flyer from someone. I th- certainly think he's going to get a a, a shake at making an NBA roster. Um, it's going to be interesting, man. I mean, up and down that Carolina roster, there's going to be several guys that have that conversation with Hubert Davis, especially with the NIL stuff coming to, into play, you know, uh, do you stay on campus? Do you take that, yeah. you know, a couple million, whatever it is, and, and get a little more under your belt? Um, so it's going to be interesting. He's been, he's certainly been around Chapel Hill long enough to move on, has done enough accolades wise. So whatever he decides, uh, I fully support him, but uh, I agree. I think he's going to get a shot. Yeah, I, I think he should if he decides to go to the NBA. If we're just sticking with North Carolina, Harrison Ingram is interesting. We'll see yep. what happens with him. I think he's coming back, but I, I like him a lot. I've always I've enjoyed watching him play. Armando, not really yep. draftable in my opinion, as much as I love him. Like not not for the Hornets, at least early in the second round, if that's where they're gonna be picking, right? It it, yeah. it seems like a Greensboro swarm type of stint. 
Kennedy Meek style if we want to keep the local comparisons rolling. And then he just okay, doesn't okay. doing anything in the NBA after that. Like, that's, yep. Yep. I, I hate to say it. He improved so much defensively. He really did. Uh, the offensively, it's just, he's so limited. He's so limited. It's, and he's not going to be stronger it, it, than everybody at the next level. Yeah, exactly. You know, can't move as well as you want uh, the big guys to in the NBA. He's never really, really developed or shown the three point shot. You know, hit hit one or two, I believe, on senior night there. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe it's in his bag, but 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 it just hasn't shown. Ingram is interesting to me, man. And he's got he's one of those guys that could skyrocket himself with a good NCAA double NCAA performance because I think he's like a Draymond Green with with a better jump shot at this time. He. He's a big time connector. He led the league. He led the the league in league play in rebounds whilst playing with Armando Baycott. You know what I mean. So that that, that shows he wants to go get the ball. His energy is going to be key for Carolina in the NCAA tournament. Um, and when they can take advantage of him posting up a smaller guy in the post, he's really effective. So I think he's only going to get stronger too. I, I think he probably should come back, go in the weight room another year, and really have a year to maybe command that team with some younger guys next year but you know if he explodes over the next couple of weeks he could definitely get some looks and i think he's going to be an nba player i, I want to have a conversation about one other guy zach Eady is number 21 on it's this fascinating I, yeah it's fascinating so seven four if you don't know okay zach Eady is the center for purdue he's been in college for a while He's going to win back-to-back -back National Player of the Year awards. It's going to happen. He won it last year. He's going to win it again, averaging 24 points and almost 12 rebounds a game. If you look at Sam Vecini's write-up, Vecini says, I think Edie has improved defensively over his time in college. He became a good, impactful drop coverage pick-and-roll defender and takes up enough space to dissuade guards from driving and finishing around the basket. There's an issue with his fit. He's the super giant. Like there's a time where we like you to be tall, but we just want you to be mobile. That's the problem. If, if you're seven four, then okay, we'll find a spot for Wimby because he dribbles behind his back and crosses up dudes that are well, but yeah. shorter than him. If you're seven four and you're a plotter, which is what Edie is, it's harder to play in the NBA. But he's so skilled offensively that he's and he's got a soft enough touch. You know, got him, especially in a weak draft. Vicini has him here as a top twenty five prospect. Like I. <laughs> Do the Hornets uh, even bother uh, here? Like in the second round, if he falls like early, I, but but even Vicini is telling you the more he hears about it, the more he thinks Edie's going to be drafted in the first round. Uh, it, it doesn't even look like there's going to be a territory for yeah. the Hornets to take a swing on him. But fascinating player, as you mentioned, that's what it feels like. It feels like the perfect um, trade back into the first round type of guy if he's there, you know. Yeah. And 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 I mean, somebody's going to take a swing on him. You're right; it's going to come down to fit. But my God, dude, I mean, you know, you could see why he's gotten two-time national player of the year or will. He's just massive. He's just huge. And you look at some of these games the Hornets play, they are not huge at times. They are not, you know, they are small. Um, and 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 certainly you think he's probably gonna get played off the court at times, but 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 who isn't that's that's seven four, you know, Jokic and, and maybe that's it. So and Wimby. Uh, and Embiid. Okay, so a couple guys, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, you know, right. uh he's he's just big. <laughs> <laughs> and he's but he's skilled he's not just big he is skilled with those soft hands uh fascinating gonna be fascinating to watch i guess could get hurt you know if somebody uh figures out how to neutralize him in the ncaa double a tournament purdue not the best record as of late no. so so it would help him maybe to have maybe to have a, a good run speaking of not that good record uh not not that good a record as of late one guy i wanted to ask you about uh and they were technically in the NCAA tournament for uh, about two hours, yep. Virginia, because yeah. Ryan Dunn, if you go back to last year, was a guy that was up at the lottery, right, and was a popular Hornets fit. I don't see how. <laughs> I don't, don't see how you could take a guy from Virginia at this point. I think the stink is too great. I, I think that complete utter inability to score. Some of it does go on Tony, Tony Bennett. I mean, God forbid somebody blame Tony Bennett for this, but. Uh, I mean, because Dunn, I think, is going to be an NBA player, but it's it's terrifying right now when you look at um, the prospect of drafting him comparison to those other guys who you think, well, I could definitely see them scoring. I just don't know if the Virginia guys have it. Maybe unfair, but that label is there. It it's so bad offensively for Ryan Dunn. I mean, he's a he's a special defensive player. What he did this year, mm -hmm. 
it, there are a lot of people that think he should have won defensive player of the year over his teammate and Reese Beekman, who's also very good, but Dunn yeah, can do oh everything. I mean, his, his weak side blocks, his team defense is just outrageous. Offensively, it is so bad, David. I can't justify taking him. Certainly, it, I know this isn't really like a Hornets conversation. That would be way too high. But like, if you're talking about, yeah. I guess, early second round because teams are so afraid of his offense, okay. But have even to be. so, have man, to be. even so, it's it's really bad. His free throw percentage is terrible. I mean, he contributes to Virginia not being able to close out games. Doesn't shoot yeah. threes, just doesn't shoot them. It's not part of his bag. It's not what he does. So that would be tough. Um, like for me, it, the more I think about it, when we think about the needs, right? Maybe to bring all of this home. Sure, circle. But, well, with Zach Eady, we're talking about how the Hornets are so small. Man, you have Mark Williams that you and I, we believe in him, right? Like I believe in Mark Williams. I don't know about the health, but I think when you're that long and big and smart, you can't fail. I, there's certainly a cap on your ceiling, but I think the skills that he has right now means that he can't fail and he'll be in the NBA a long time, as long as his body lets him. And so if yep. that's the case with guard depth with Lamelo because of Lamelo's injury history, now center depth because Nick Richards is in every trade rumor. I'm amazed, honestly, that he hung on to the Hornets this year at the trade deadline yeah. because his contract works well. People are looking for center depth. So if you trade Nick Richards that would allow you to do so while having somebody maybe you get in the draft. Like so much of it is based off of even injured players right now. And, and it doesn't mean you, you always want to subscribe to the best player available theory that always. And sometimes that is yeah. just, you just gravitate towards, you know, a position of need and then thinking that guy's the best player available too. But even so just the injuries impact it, 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 it makes it a wild card, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like with Mark Williams yeah. and Lamelo ball being injured, trying to figure out how these guys can work with the Hornets. It just makes it all a wild card. And this draft is huge for the Hornets. All of them are, of course. Yeah. But they've added Brandon Miller. They've got LaMelo Ball. If you can add another rotation, solid slash starter piece, hopefully, in this draft, you, you, you have to. If this new ownership, if this new leadership in the front office want to take a step forward, they almost have to nail – the first pick in this draft and get a guy that can play and play in this group so yeah when you start to factor in if, if he could get hurt i mean that's going to be a consideration the tall guys always have that consideration over the some of the shorter or the younger guys more mobile guys but uh the hornets have got to add another piece and if they do if they add another piece and if lamella ball comes back healthy and if mark williams come back healthy you know then you can start to go feel build around that but 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 you yeah. know, feel okay so we'll see yeah, I was about to say, can we feel good? It felt too strong to me too, David, to say feel good. Like feel okay <laughs> felt a lot safer there because I was like, is it okay to feel good about what they might do? You're right. Hit Hitting on one draft pick is so huge every year. If they hit on this one, then you have three guys that are under 24 that you feel great about. And then you also have the Heat's first round pick and the Mavericks first round pick. You got assets to work with. Then we can talk about asset yeah. management in a good way, in a great way with the Hornets. So hopefully they can do it. We'll have plenty of draft talk here on Locked on Hornets. That's David Walker. This was fun talking about the stars in college basketball. Thanks to David for yeah. helping us do it. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter at David B. Walker. And I'm Walker Mayo. Listen to me, WFNZ, every weekday from 12 to 3 p.m. Thanks, David. Appreciate it, man. I'll see you out at yeah, the Spencer Center. Yeah. We'll see.